Hi, Steve Trelletti. I just want to go over how I accomplished this week's example image for week 52 boundaries. I went back where I filmed my introduction video for this week. Now, if you've seen the introduction video, nice sunny day, 86 degrees, light breeze, sunny. It was just a beautiful day. That next morning, I went for high tide, which was at around 830. Night and day, 59 degrees, 22 miles per hour wind, gusts up to 30, uh, and it was really cloudy. Now, the cloudy part is good because I wanted to get a long exposure. So, you know, if it's a bright sunny day, I, I really, really need to slow down that light, and I may not have been able to get the 20 seconds I got that morning. But I also had to make a gear choice and some precautions when you're going to the ocean and it's windy. Uh, that, what we call that sea mist, that ocean mist. Uh, the wind will just blow humidity from the ocean and, and, and all kinds of stuff onto your gear. So really, you know, limit the amount of gear you're going to bring and make sure that you're going to clean it afterwards because it is salt and, and you know, salt's going to eat away at some of your gear. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is I made a choice to not go with an ND filter. I went with a variable ND filter. And the difference is really simple. And you know, for those of you who've never really seen one, you know, technically you just put them on your lens and you turn them. And they'll go from bright to dark. And this one will give you about two to nine stops. And the reason I'm using it for photography, because they're really meant more for video, but I'm going to use it for photography because it's going to keep me from having to clean my lens and the filter. See, with a regular ND filter, all that sea mist, that ocean mist, would just kind of be blown on my lens as I'm doing my composition, I'm focusing on my subject. So I'd have to clean that, then put my filter on, and then have to clean that filter again. So it's kind of twice the work, and I'm exposing more gear to that, that ocean salt. So by putting this on my camera, I can just make it bright, focus on my subject, and then, you know, do my composition like I want it, turn it to the darkest I can handle. And you got to be careful. These, if you push them too hard, especially on a full frame camera with too much of a wide angle, you're going to get what we call cross banding or X banding. It's going to be an X or a cross that's darker on your image. So, you know, sometimes if it's too wide on a full frame, you're, you can only use half of your filter. In this case, I was using 80 millimeters on a full frame. I was able to go about 90% of what it gives me and the image looked pretty good. Now, that's it. That's how I slowed down my light. Uh, the, my choice was a variable ND filter. This is a Tiffin variable ND filter. The gear I used, the camera. Well, I, I used a Nold 2880 plastic lens. I usually use it for infrared, uh, but I also want to just use a run-in-a-mill lens to show you you don't need expensive equipment to create a great image. You just got to use that equipment efficiently. So this is just a cheap little zoom and you know they used to be part of the kit lenses uh, back in the old film consumer cameras from Nikon. Uh, basically I paid $35 for this lens and um, I put that on a Nikon D810, an older DSLR. Now as you've seen in the video at the beginning and here I'm going to show you another video right now, I had this camera stable on a tripod. And, you know, that's really important. I'm getting a long exposure. Now, I'm going to do the ocean 20 seconds. It's a little more forgiving if I get a little shake somewhere. But if you're going to do something like, a, you know, just a motion blur, and you're trying to keep a lot of your, sub, of your entire scene sharp, and just your subject's kind of moving, um, you're, you're really going to need to stabilize your camera. Even if you're shooting 130 at 115, even at 1 100, you never know. Just that lack of light, and, you know, if you just got, you know, unstable hands as you trigger the camera, I, you're really going to move and, and your entire picture is just going to lack that overall clarity. And you know, a tripod allows you to experiment. You're maintaining your composition. You can shoot the same picture over again. You can shoot it in HDR, multiple exposures. I really recommend you, you use for any, you know, long exposures or or slow shutter speeds, you really use a tripod. What I did to improve stability, I also have right here a remote transceiver. I use this little remote control here. It's wireless. You can use a wired remote control if you're using your phone, um, you know, iPhone or iOS or Android. You can get some Bluetooth remotes. And um, But if you're going to use a phone for this challenge, you're probably going to have to download an app that gives you control 
over your camera settings because you really want to get that long exposure you're going to need it. you may have to use like sunglasses as a filter or something to reduce the light but you can't just point and click and I'll show you an image I took um, later on that is basically just from an iPhone and even though it's not the fastest shutter speed because it wasn't uh, really bright out uh, there's a little bit of, of movement to it you're gonna see it's it's still too sharp to really show that motion blur well it comes out well but it, it's not exactly what we're looking for in this challenge so technically I had this camera stable on a tripod I used a remote control to add stability I'm not triggering the camera by touching it I'm doing it remotely here when yeah there's a lot of wind I'll tell you that uh, wireless remote is really good if you notice there's no camera straps on my uh, on my uh, uh, camera you know my lens cap has a little strap to it but that's off while I'm shooting there's nothing that's going to dangle on and off of this camera and just a wire from the remote control is going to be bad now let's look, go over what I did to accomplish my 20 seconds this camera here has a native ISO of 64 I can go to a two steps down I think to 25 ISO I left it at 64 ISO I went to 80 millimeters f32 and I you know basically I experimented and 20 seconds really gave me what uh, a good exposure and what I needed I mean you know look at this image here's my sample image it's nice and smooth and actually you know you zoom into it you'll actually see it's kind of misty and just has an overall really nice effect now in contrast look at this image taken with an iPhone now you know they're pretty much both calibrated I use a gray card digital gray card I get my white balance uh, so you know you, you could see they're, they're pretty much in line with a good white balance they look the same the iPhone picture because of lack of light you could still see if you zoom in there's a little bit of motion blur in the ways but we need a little more for this challenge and so now you could see where you know you're going to shoot with a phone it's not just a snapshot you're really really gonna have to get a tripod for your phone something to stabilize your phone get an application to play with your settings and you know you may have to put something in front of your phone lens uh, whether it be a filter sunglasses just to lower that light so that your you know your shutter speed is just going to be low enough to at least get some motion blur if not a little longer exposure for this photo challenge so that's it in a nutshell that's how I accomplished the image I hope that helps you guys uh, you know just to complete your challenge it's Christmas today so Merry Christmas to everyone season's greetings I hope you've all had a wonderful holiday season and as we roll into the new year happy 2022 to you all thank you for being part of the photo challenge and as always have fun with photography mm -hmm.